Hello, in this video we're going to look at bounds on convergent sequence of real numbers. And this is a follow-up video I did uh, the other day called Adding, Multiplying, Dividing Convergent Sequences of Real Numbers. In there we stated a couple theorems without proof and I thought I'd go back and prove those statements. And that's, that's where we are here. So if we let A in and B in be convergent sequences of real numbers and assume a n converges to a and b n converges to b and uh, b n and b are never zero these two statements are true um, a n the sequence a n is bounded and one over the absolute value of b n is bounded for all n now to prove that since a n converges to a that means for a given epsilon there exists an n such that for n greater than this capital N, then this uh, inequality holds. It means that this a n and a are getting really, really close as n gets big. Um, now, just using the absolute value inequalities, we get this, and then we add a to both sides, and we get this. So now, if we think about it, a n, once it gets past capital N, is always bounded between these two numbers. Now, we don't know what happens for the first capital N observations, but once it gets past, then we know we're between there. Well, if we let M1 be the minimum of the first capital N observations and this number, and M2 be the maximum of the first capital N numbers and this number, then AN is bounded by M1 and N2. You know, the sequence never goes below M1 and never above M2 when we define it like this. So it is bounded. Now, uh, part two, uh, since AN is convergent, and I'm already seeing that, that this, I should have, uh, we want to do BN converges to B. And so we're going to have to assume that it's kind of a new problem, and AN converges to A, and a n and b are never zero and I, I wish i'd have caught that beforehand so that's that's where we are where a n and a are never zero and it converges to a then given epsilon um, and we want it to be less than the absolute value of a over two there exists an n such that you know when n is greater than cap n then this uh, inequality is true now, that implies, like what we did up there, that a n is always between these two numbers for when little n gets above capital N. All right, so we, this is true. Now, we're going to examine two cases, and technically you don't need it, but I think it's easier to see, so that's why I'm going to do two cases. So, uh, remember this setting right here, and that uh, epsilon is always less than... Uh, absolute value of a over 2. So now let's assume that the limit is positive. Okay, Then we know this is true. And if we uh, think about this, that um, if we, and, and since um, epsilon is less than absolute value of a over 2, but a is positive, so this is a positive number, that's a positive number, and this is a positive number. So we can take the absolute value of everything and it doesn't change the inequalities. Now, we this is already a positive number, so we can just take the absolute value signs away, same way for here. And I'm gonna leave them here. Um, but since A is positive, we can put the absolute value just over this piece. And then we subtract absolute value everywhere but then this is saying that the absolute value of the absolute value of a n minus the absolute value of a is less than epsilon. Well, this is for any epsilon. So this is saying that the absolute value of a n converges to the absolute value of a. Now, this is when a is positive. So let's look at um, when a is negative. So now... Um, Oh, we're here at this inequality, and then we take the absolute values everywhere. 
But since these pieces are always negative, remember we're in this case, and I, and I wish I'd have written this one down first. Um, a is negative, and we're adding a small negative number, and A is negative, we're subtracting, so it stays negative. So this is negative, this A ends are negative. So when you take the absolute value of everything, you know, since those are negatives, they actually get shifted like this to the positive. And so this is the flip when I do the absolute value. So this piece is actually the biggest now. And, the, and so the, I just say note the flip in here. Now, um, if we can fact, you know, multiply it by minus one in, inside the absolute value and it doesn't change it. And so that's what we do here. And we do the same over here. Now, remember, a is negative, so a negative of a negative is positive, and we're subtracting off a small little piece. This, this is a smaller negative than that is positive. So we can actually just get rid of the absolute value signs in the same way here. But remember, negative an A is, is actually positive, right? Because it starts out negative. So it, we could just put the absolute value of A around it, and then it makes it always positive, same way here. Well, then if we subtract absolute value of A, we get this. And then this is the same as taking the absolute value of that difference is less than epsilon. But this is for any generic epsilon. And so this says that the limit of the absolute value of A in converges to A when A is negative. So it, it's, it's a fact. Now the absolute value of A in converges to the absolute value of A for any A. So that means that we have this case. That, that since the absolute value of a n converges to absolute value of a for any epsilon, then, you know, for when little n gets bigger than big n, this is true. And then we can, uh, we can take the absolute value, you know, undo the absolute value and then add the absolute value of a everywhere and we get this. Um, but um, this says, if we look at this piece here, so we actually are going to go backwards. This is this right here. And then we have this piece. But epsilon is less than absolute value of A over 2. So if we subtract an even bigger piece, it gets smaller. But this is, you know, absolute value of A minus half of the absolute value of A. Then we get that positive half back. So this tells us once little n gets above big N, then the absolute value of this series is always bigger than this piece here. So if we let M3 be the minimum of all, you know, the first N, absolute value of the first N, observ capital N observations, and then this, because once we get past big N, it's always, they're always bigger than that. So we're, we're going to find the smallest one here. And they're all greater than zero, right? Because absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero, but no a n or a can be zero, so we have to be strictly greater than zero. And that says m3 is greater than or less than or equal to all the a n possible. Now, if we take the reciprocal, that says that one over m3 is bigger than this observation for all n. So if we let M4, for instance, be this quantity here, then 1 over absolute value of A n is bounded above, it's bounded by 0 and M4. So it is a bounded sequence also. Well, that's all I have for today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.